and the Crypt. Hey, everybody out there in YouTube land. This is Jen, and Christian's with me, and it is that time of the week again to go spooking along that crawly crypt. We have a fun episode because there is a maniac in the crypt this week, a maniac at large. So if you want to hear our thoughts, stick around. Adapted from Crime and Suspense Stories number 27. Uh, this is a fun one. You just literally in your opening say, oh, this is a fun episode, to now, ah, this episode sucks, apparently. <laughs> and this one, uh, okay, it, it's a mixed bag for me because this one is another kind of one that I tend to forget till I'm watching it. It has a good cast. It has a wonderful director uh, behind the cameras. Um, but the thing with this one, there's not really that much memorabilia. And for and the and the twist ending, which we always see these twist endings coming. This one was a little more telegraphed than usual. I like our twist, though. I think it's fun. I get that. It is a fun twist. It's just one we've seen done in many, many other things. Yeah, I suppose so. But I think it works well for what we're doing here. I like it. Like, I guess I was some issues, but I, I actually always, always had quite a fondness for this episode. I get this. And this episode is chock full. One of the cool things about Tales from the Crypt is, sure, we have, like, big name stars like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Deneen Moore. But I love it. Uh, Tales from the Crypt, especially as we started to get along and toward the middle seasons is they had a lot of people that were famous but not necessarily they were always actors or actors that were up and comers and in this episode we have a musician yeah not we, the first or last yeah not the first or the last yeah we have adam and from adam and the ants as well as his solo career titled adam ant um all you 80s new waves babies I, will I, know I, this. I, I love the ant so i was it's always it's always a pleasure to see him in something he never did too much acting but he does a really good job in this episode being this like really socially awkward kind of creepy but you can't tell if he's intentionally being sinister or just really socially awkward kind of uh, kind of guy I, I really like his performance in this episode yes his acting choices are good and it is kind of sad you don't see him in more because he's he's probably uh, even though we have some big name actors in this episode he's probably the one that steals the show for I would say our lead actress does a really good Blythe job Danner. um plus also uh, Clarence William the third just because like he is the shit he is the he is he is the, one of my very character actors. I love him in stuff like Tales from the Hood and stuff. And it's cool to see him in an earlier role in this. Like, he'd been doing stuff since the 70s, but it's, it's I always think of his later career stuff after Tales from the Hood. You so, don't go to Mod Squad. Yeah, yeah, I don't go to Mod Squad. Um, so it's always cool to see him in the, uh, see him in this one. And he doesn't get a really big role. That's one thing I would have liked, because he his character is original for the episode. There is no counterpart in the comic, so I wish we would have done a little bit more with him than we ultimately end up doing, but he's still it's still fun to see him. It's no surprise that he shows up in this episode either because because who's behind the camera is John Frankenheimer and he worked with him a lot. Yeah, they he, worked together a lot. Reindeer Games. Uh, you guys might know him. For, he directed probably horror people will know him for the 1996's Island of Dr. Moreau. You know, the one that was originally supposed to be Richard Stanley's <laughs> thing, but then Val Kilmer was an asshole and then Marlon Brando was like, fuck this and that whole production. Watch Island of Lost Souls. It's a great documentary about that whole thing. But yeah, he was the villain for that. Um, I, he's also probably best Best, best well known for directing the Mentorian Candidate. Very well acclaimed and beloved director who's done a lot of stuff. And you can see his style kind of flowing. This episode kind of does have like an earlier like kind of 60s, 70s kind of um, um, film to uh, kind of feel to it as opposed to a lot of the more contemporary feels of the other, more recent episodes that have been going for. That's very true and one of the things, and you can definitely, this was something that was one of his signatures and this is one of the really big praises besides uh, Adam Zant's performance of this episode is I love the unique shooting styles. I oh. love how we're opening in the library and we get this POV, which is, I guess, a little more commonplace now, but back then it was very TV, innovative. It's a great tracking shot introducing all of the different suspects for who the maniac could be in the episode. It's a great tracking shot. There's a lot of really good framing and blocking here, too. Like, you get very early on. I really like the one uh, where it's right after the POV tracking shot where we're all, you know, zooming in on the newspaper that literally says maniac at large, and then you have the shadow of the, uh, uh, the punk kid with the switch played about the stab it. It just, it's a really good blocking there and framing. It all looks really good how they cast the shadows and stuff. This episode has some really good camera work, actually. I just also really like how um, there's a multiple points where our main character is like running all through 
throughout this library and you have the fucking camera move following it all almost like it's a stage like almost like this is a play or something it has a very unique state of feel to it that i really like it has a hitchcock feel to it me does it, like i said it has that earlier kind of 60s feel to it again which makes sense given this is a director who'd been working since like the 40s yes and, and like i said this was kind of his signature thing uh, innovative shots were something he he did right up until the end and i, I he's a good fit for this episode i think where this and and the performances are good too i'm not saying that this is a particularly bad one and a lot of people have said that while well, this one's a little different from our usual tells from the crypt show we're kind of toned down a little bit it's a it's a much it's a little more, bit more underplayed yeah it's, it's, it's more of a suspense fitting since the comic it's from it's more of a suspense story it's more of a crime suspense story yes know? but 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 the ending definitely is that tells from the crypt brand of oh, okay that's a cute little even though unless you're new to that or very young you're gonna see the twist coming but everybody is having fun with it and i do like life danner's uh performance where at the end where she's just going cuckoo for cocoa puffs and clarence williams is just kind of looking at her like holy fuck she's what, gone over the deep what end what the fuck is going on <laughs> yeah it's great i also like i know you might disagree with me i like our setup and our story for this episode oh i like because this is basically like a whodunit like we're set in yes, a, we're set in so. a library and like we said we have uh, we're introduced to various like th mainly three different possible um people who can be the maniac at large you have clarence williams who's playing this kind of like questionable security guard he's kind of making some moves on our main character and very unwanted little questionable you have adam and playing this kind of weird like very socially awkward guy who's like fascinated by serial killers and then you have like her kind of nancy reagan karen ass boss um of the library who's just a total bitch yes it was also an old time yeah she still yeah. worked uh, she was in green lantern but she was an older actress and stuff and her performance is really good also clarence williams i like it because he's pretty normal but then they get down to the basement and he has this face and it is creepy where he just smiles <laughs> he's even though this is before he slips into the in the undertaker from tales from the hood he does he, does. he, he totally slips into that for a second and it really works and for like i said adam and i gotta just give another shout out because again like christian said this and he's totally right but i take it as he's trying to flirt with her it's a horror nerd trying to flirt with her so what's a horror nerd gonna flex well he's a true crime horror nerd and so he's talking about the serial killer at large and he's giving his theories and stuff and it is it, it's his way of seduction and seducing but you know to a non horror person you yeah, might come off as a little bit creepy yeah i i really like the whole th uh, thing and we have our main character like trying to figure out like she's very she's a very skittish mousy kind of person who's like freaked out by the whole uh killing spree going on in the city and she's suspicious that one of the, these people must be the killer at large and she's trying to look out for herself while she has to stay over uh, stay in late with the three of them in the building like the, it's a great setup it really is this reminds me of a tea kettle on the stove yeah. and the, the temperature just keeps rising and rising into a boiling point and that's kind of Blythe Banner's character she's just she's not wound super she's wound very very tightly and you know a few more cranks and she's gonna go over the deep end and it's fun um and like I said the characters do what they can my issues is mostly with the story been there done that I, I guess I can I guess I can see that the interactions are really fun and like I, I wish they were a little more over the top though like some of our tells from the crypt I kind of like how downplayed most of them are like I do wish we would have gotten more of Clarence's stuff and all that and a little bit more anime what interactions would have been kind of fun um but like I think I like the interactions we get overall and we do still get like a little bit of over the top and it's like the dude the, the dude who's like trying to return a book like towards the end of the episode like that man is determined to get his return and he is trying to break down this goddamn door so he can get so he doesn't get that late fee it's that it's, it's very over the top in my opinion <laughs> That's why every week HBO brings you Tales from the Crypt. A light with your arms through murder, madness, and mayhem. And that's just the fun part. <laughs> Tales from the Crypt. It's only on HBO. But this is this one is pretty good. Um, I I would say it's fine. Is the is the comic any better? Um, moving into the comic, like th not really. The comics basically the sa the same setup. No changes. Uh, not really. Like like I said, Clarence William Thomas's character of the security guard doesn't exist in the comic. Instead, it's just our main character Blanche in the episode. Her name's Margaret, but in the uh, comic, her name is Blanche. Insert Golden Girls joke here. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. I was fantasizing what Tom Brokaw looks like naked. 
Um, but yeah, Blanche is stuck in this building with another guy, kind of sketchy, we uh, weird, fascinated by serial killers, as well as her kind of bitchy boss. Same basic uh, basic setup uh, for, for the most part. Um, there's some very interesting pa uh, panel work here and artwork towards the end of the comic, and I do kind of like, we get a little bit more in-depth look into, like, Blanche slash Margaret's psyche. Um, we get a little bit more intrigue into her mind a little bit, which I do like, because that is something sort of missing from the episode. Like, Margaret doesn't really get all that much flesh uh, fleshing out or, like, exploration into why she's so skittish or anything. Like, I feel like that's kind of a missed opportunity, because the actress does a really good job here. It just, they kind of are very uninterested with her character, as opposed to her comic counterpart, which gets a little bit more to her. She's not super deep or interesting, but she gets a little bit more to, uh, to her. But otherwise, it's basically the same, even down to her ending. I will say, I do like our version of the ending slightly more, because due to Clarence Thomas's character not existing, the part he plays in the ending doesn't exist, so our ending is a little bit bleaker than the than its episode counterpart, but otherwise, there's not really too much of a difference here. Um, but yeah, no, absolutely. But no, this episode overall, I think I definitely like this one a lot more than you do. I don't hate, I don't want to come across that I hate this episode or anything. It's just one that doesn't really stick, and it should because of who's behind the camera and everyone in front of it, and everyone gives a pretty good performance. I just feel like this is when we've been there and done that, but I am in the minority. A lot of people say that they like this, and one of the reasons they like it, like you, it's kind of more of an understated one. Yeah, it's a little different. Tells from the crypt. Like, it's a little different. It's a little different from a standard crypt fair. Like, it's still very very much crypty, but it's a little different. Got a slightly different feel to it. It's got that it older kind of classic Hollywood feel, which crypt would slip in, in and out of, as the fiesta would go on, actually, at various points. It kind of started last week with King of the Road, but I didn't we, like that one. as we talked about, that episode wasn't <laughs> even meant for crypt. So, it kind of really started here, where crypt kind of started to really kind of lean into, like, sort of old Hollywood feel for some of their episodes, which and boy, really, are we gonna do really that. becoming to a very pertinent uh, sorry, starting next season. Yeah, but overall, this is a fine episode. It's not one of my particular favorites, but I can totally understand it if it's one of you guys is out there, and I think you enjoyed it. I really like this episode. Oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, overall, I would say, yeah, watch this episode, but I would not be in a hurry. There are other episodes. Like, if you're only going to, if you're, like, watching this to find out which is the ones to wait to give your time to and the ones to pass on, this is the one I would say exactly pass on, but it wouldn't be in my top tier either. It'd be in the lower end, I, if I'm going to be honest. I can understand that. I can totally understand that. For me, personally, I give this episode a pretty strong positive. I always had a big fondness for this episode. I like, kind of, like, who done it, like, everyone questioning each other as to who the killer could be. It's like thing. It's classic thing setup. I always like stories of people like always suspicious of each, uh, each other and like who's the who's the next person who's going to be picked off. I always like these types of stories and setups. I like a lot of the perform uh, performances here. It's cool to see Adam Ant especially like doing yes. a really good performance. He de as much as I love Clarence Thomas the third. Um, he this is definitely the best. Adam yes. yeah. As much as I love Clarence Williams the third, uh, Adam Ant definitely is the highlight of this episode in my opinion. He's having a really fun time with this role and I just listen to some Adam and Ant's music. Really great stuff overall. Um, and it's also just cool that they, not only they they got the big names, but they also would get these kind of niche people. Yeah, because like, this was the early 90s. Like, yeah. he, he was still around, but like, Adam and the Ants had been broken up for quite a while, and he was doing solo stuff, but it wasn't lighting the world on fire, so it's kind of cool to see, like, I guess, I hate to say it, so given how much I actually like the dude, but kind of like, this washed up uh, remnant of the 80s new wave scene kind of trying to get a second life going here. It's kind of fun. But you really like the dude. I, get, I really <laughs> like Adam and the Ant. Like, I, the, the first couple Adam and the Ant albums are some Bloody of my favorite. Bloody two yeah, shows. like, so the first two Adam and Ant albums are, like, some of my favorite uh, New Wave albums. I love the hell out of those, but, like, yeah, no, it's it's kind of cool to see, like, this washed-up hack remnant of the New Wave era trying to kind of get uh, gaining some glory again in the in the 90s. It's kind of a shame, too, because he really knows how to lean into it. He's good. Yeah, I kind of wouldn't would mind. You could kind of do some fun, fun stuff. Plus, like, you know, they always have that new, like, New Wave theatricality to them, so you could have done some fun st uh, stuff with that, with, with giving him some more horror roles or something. I would have been down for that. Would you say that this is one of your top tier or no? Not an all-time favorite or anything, but this is always an episode I do have a lot of fondness for and remember, and always do like remember. I, I forget how good of a cast it has usually, um, but I, this is an episode where it does stick into my brain. Like, yeah, I really like this episode. This is a fun one. This is uh, a quieter one. Okay, yeah, definitely. It's very, it's very different. So I personally really recommend checking this one out. Highly recommend. As for the comic, uh, 
it's basically the same. I do think in some ways the comic is better than the episode just due to the fact that we're getting a little bit more in bl into Blanche's mind. Plus, I actually, again, I like the ending more. But the episode has Adam Ant and Clarence William III, so it kind of counterbalances it there, honestly, and, all, and some really good cinematography. So it kind of counterbalances it there. So, yeah, if you want to check out the comic, sure, go for it. But episode, I definitely say worth a watch at some point. Very good. I wonder if we can say the same thing about next week's episode. I don't know. Can we? I guess we'll have to see if we might be a little bit split on next week's episode. Who knows? Because next week we're talking about split personality. Ooh, very good. So be sure to tune in next week, kitties, barring that none of our family members break anything again. Um, as always, booze and ghouls, we thank you so much for watching. We wish you a good day, a good evening, and remember, in the meantime, keep watching and talking horror, and we'll be back soon. Bye, guys. Cheers.